Hello, I'm Greg E.G. Idrafilis, this is a Razer Academy replay analysis. Today I'll be taking a look at how to defend a series of Protoss all-ins based on the new Mothership Core uh, versus a Korean Protoss on the ladder. So here we have me, E.G. Idra, as the red Zerg in the top right. And in the bottom left we have a Korean Protoss. Uh, this is a ladder game, I'm not sure entirely who he is. Um, obviously a Korean Smurf. Uh, however, he has been playing the hot ladder since pretty early on, since well before the switch of the majority of the Koreans. He's always been one of the more abusive Protosses playing the ladder. He really takes advantage of some of the new features that Protoss gets early on in the game, particularly the Mothership Core. Uh, there is a trend within HOTS of Protosses opening with Gateway Expansion. The reason for this being that, well, one, Zergs are just very comfortable against the Fortress Expand, the Nexus First kind of styles. So they're more used to that and they're prepared to deal with that. However, Gateway First received quite a bit of buff with Mothership Core because now if you go Gateway, Expansion, and then do a very quick Warp Gate timing after, before that was a very all-in kind of thing. If, if Zerg realized it, made enough Roach Link to defend it, and you lost that initial army, you were, just, you were kind of dead because Protoss doesn't really have much of a follow-up to that because they have to invest so much to get that attack out early. However, with the Mothership Core, they can simply move out with that army, and if the Zerg does have enough units, they can simply recall and maintain their entire army yeah, whereas Zerg has invested all those resources in that army, really has not been able to get their drone economy up, and Protoss can at the same time be building up their probe economy. They won't have any tech infrastructure to follow it up, they are unlikely to have a Robo or Stargate or anything yet, but they will have a much better economy, as Zerg really has to be very careful about how they proportion their larva. So unless Zerg is absolutely perfect in the amount of army they make to hold off that attack, it becomes very difficult for Zerg to actually come out ahead in any situation. So, very smart to open up that gateway expansion into the Mothership Core poke. He also really take his, takes advantage of the uh, the strength of the new Void Ray and air-based openings in general. Uh, and one very important thing he does, as we see here, is he always sends out that early probe scout with the gateway expansion. A lot of Protoss players neglect to probe scout with gateway expansion. They try and simply maintain that extra bit of their economy. However, this then allows Zerg to go hatchery first, and hatchery first into speedling is almost a build counter to gateway expansion as you have speedling and out in time to control any kind of early probe that comes out to put down a proxy pylon. There's no chance of a four base or four gateway off one base, uh, which is quite threatening. Um, this player in particular often does four gateways if he sees Zerg being too greedy. That is why I rushed that speedling upgrade here, putting down that gas as soon as I saw that he didn't put down a Nexus first. However, we see that, actually from this point on, I will just leave this Overlord here to watch for that Nexus. As soon as that Nexus goes down, that is your cue to go and take a third base. However, if you see no Nexus, then you can assume that it's going to become some kind of one-gate aggression, one-base aggression. So you just continue to produce Zerglings, maybe an extra Queen um, as one-base Stargate play. Has seen a little bit of usage, it's definitely not a popular thing, and it does need to be a surprise. However, it does occasionally happen, so having that extra Queen out... It gets you the create spread, it also gives you some additional anti-air defense, should that be the case. Um, in this game, we will see in a second, he's going to put down that uh, natural nexus, so we will be going into a bit more of a macro game. However, he is a very aggressive player, and this, uh, this replay analysis is kind of just a demonstration of how to hold off multiple layers of Protoss aggression within Heart of the Swarm. We see that he is putting a little bit of, or he is trying to hide a probe up in the top left, however, I will go and find that. Uh, proxy pylons, always, um, just the same as they were in Wings of Liberty, always a bit of a threat that you have to watch out for. Now that my natural has finished sending down the queen, we see that that third queen is in production. As I said, he really likes the air, uh, air aggression follow-ups to this one gateway opening. So very important to get that extra queen out early versus him. You really need that creep spread. Um, again, another, the Mothership Core has made Protoss early game much more powerful, not only because of recall, but obviously time stop quite powerful in any situation, and also just the fact that it is an air unit, um, we will see that he's going to use the Mothership Core here to try and deny my third base for some time, just by shooting down the drone as it tries to travel over. So you really need that creep spread, you really need those additional queens just to chase off the Mothership Core. Coming in, doing a little bit of harass, as I said, being very effective in the use of some of these new early game Protoss tactics that a lot of Protoss is actually just disregard. Um, of course, every Protoss knows about the strength of the late game Protoss Turtle Army, However, some of them have not really fully explored the the new threats of Protoss early game aggression. But we see that my third hatchery is coming down in response to his natural nexus. We see he is also getting that very fast Stargate. There are pretty much two options uh, in this case. That is either the fast tech or the very fast warp gate rush. Um, you really do need to take advantage of that fast cyber core in one way or the other, either for the warp gate or for the faster tech. And he is obviously opting for the Stargate, uh, chronoing out that void ray immediately. 
Also, we can see on the minimap he is leaving his mothership core up near my third base, and that will assist with the rush, um, either casting time stop on the queens or just providing a little bit of additional DPS. Perhaps we're calling his army out should he get into trouble somehow. A very smart little pylon block there, making sure that he's going to be walled off against any kind of circling attack. Also using those sentries, uh, obviously for force field. And one thing early on, I did go out and catch that hidden probe with my uh, circling, so he is forced to walk his zealots across the map. Uh, I guess it's significantly less effective, and my circling does see those, so we'll see that I do produce a bunch more circlings in order to shut that down. Uh, obviously you don't want to allow those zealots to get into your queens, you need the queens to be fighting against the air. It's very hard to have enough queens to actually hold off air on their own at this point. And because this attack does come so quickly, I don't really have spores down at my third base just yet. If we look up on the production tab, he is just adding another gateway and continuing to get his economy up. Uh, I as well am balancing my drone strips and my zerglings. I know that this is a relatively light rush. It's very tech heavy. It's coming too quickly for there to be a lot of gateways behind it, so there's no way that it can actually be uh, a very dedicated uh, hardcore aggressive pressure. So while I am making Zerglings to hold off the zealous that he does have, I am still producing drones as I don't want to fall behind on economy in trying to defend perhaps with uh, a significant amount of army. So here we see the queens focusing down the mothership core. I really don't want him to be able to recall out of here, so it's very important to take that out. He does not have significant air army. He doesn't have a ton of uh, a ton of phoenix or void rays yet, so I'm not too worried about my ability to defend those. I mostly just wanted to get the mothership core down so he wouldn't be able to recall out of here and save his units. We see that the zealots are following quite quickly, and I do have a spore crawler up here for support. And, um, even though that spore crawler has pretty limited range, it makes anti-air defense much, much easier as I can just poke at him with the queens and just make sure that I retreat uh, to range of the spore crawler should he go in and try and be aggressive. Also, my third queen coming down here, uh, trying to chase down that void ray. And I actually am going to get it in a moment here, which is pretty much the end of this arrest. We'll see he accidentally attack moves while he's still within range of the queen, goes back and engages, and does lose that. So I have now uh, completely secured myself against that early game aggression, but we saw that you had to be very, very committed to dealing with it. That is the thing about the gateway expansion, um, pretty much anything. The gateway expansion does allow you access to either tech or uh, warp gate tech, very, very quickly. However, it is at the cost of your economy and your infrastructure. You're becoming very focused on one single thing. And so as the uh, as a Zerg player, as your opponent, you have to also be focused on defending that one single thing. Um, I had those four queens out there already. I already had a spore crawler up. I made units as well to deal with his zealots. It was There was quite a bit of investment in that defense area, so you have to not underestimate it. You have to be able to shut it down completely and then focus on your economy and catching up. Not really catching up, but um, expanding your economy after you have stabilized. So we see at this point that he is sticking on two bases. If we look at the production tab, he is getting that robo bay up right away. So it is actually going to be for a two, two base colossus timing. And um, it does not really seem like a hot build. However, most two base uh, Protoss aggression has actually become a hot build in that you can now include the mothership core and you actually get the time stop ability as well. And this makes it much, much more effective than it was in Wings of Liberty. And this goes for pretty much all two base builds. Um, Pure gateway builds, uh, Immortal Allians in particular, I believe, are much more scary with the time stop ability. Uh, and as we will see here, two base Colossus as well. Uh, I'm putting up a Hydra Den as he does have uh, pretty sustained air harass. His Phoenix are continuing to fly around, even though they haven't done a ton of damage. That is something I'm a little bit worried about. And I don't really want to go Muta as he's still on two base. And uh, Phoenix plus Warp Gate timing uh, kind of scares me if I am going to go Muta. It's just not a beefy enough army to try and pull that off. Uh, however, the problem here is that he does go to base Colossus, and you need to scout that very quickly, and I'm not going to see that just in time, so I'm going to have a very ground-focused army. So another aspect of this replay analysis that we'll be looking at is how to take advantage of positioning macro, just uh, relying on basic mechanics to take, um, just take advantage of the situation and to compensate for an inferior army. The Colossus is pretty much a counter to the Hydras and the Zerglings, so this is not the most efficient army I can have. I will put it on Aspire as soon as I do see the Colossus. However, obviously you want it much quicker. You want to have Corruptors out before that, uh, before there are two Colossus on the field. So I'm not really strategy countering this. You'll just watch how I deal with this in terms of army movement and macro uh, and uh, producing it. So here I am taking the fourth base, even though I know he doesn't have the third. I do want to force an attack out of him. If you allow Protoss to just sit for too long, they do end up with a maxed army. So you kind of have to force some kind of action out of them, whether it be through teching or through uh, going for an expansion. That is why I put down that fourth base. I knew there's a very good chance it would die, but that's absolutely okay. 
So here's the first time I see the Colossus. As soon as I get my army to safety, I will put up its buyer, but also just continuing unit production. And I'm going to back away, I'm not taking engagement in a bad position, focusing down that Colossus a bit, make him pull that back, and then as soon as the force fields go up, I know I have to run away. And again, probably going to lose that hatchery, but he has to be careful, as I do have very good creeps right here, I will be able to go in and surround him uh, if he's not too careful, so he has to be kind of passive about that. However, I know I'm not going to be able to attack that head-on, but I do run around the back, and I actually shoot down his mothership core. Uh, that's always a very important thing to take out, both because of the strength of time stop, but also because of the recall ability. Not only is recall annoying, like you want to get that kill, you want to finish off those units, um, but it can actually be absolutely game-changing if they do any kind of damage and then just pull the army back. Not only have you taken that damage, but you've also produced all those extra units, uh, and for essentially nothing. So they can simply sit back and wait for the lack of economy that they have uh, caused you to take to kick in, and then their army will be uh, even more stronger than it should be relative to yours. So here we see he's just continuing to uh, be aggressive. However, he does put down a third nexus. Against the Protoss, who keeps constant pressure on you and expands at the same time, you always, always want to counterattack with a small amount of units. It's almost impossible for him to both hold that and continue to add to his uh, to his main army. So we see that the third nexus has been cancelled. Uh, so I am making sure that I'm going to keep him all in. I'm not going to give him a fallback. I want to, this army to be the only thing he has to rely on. If I allow him to get that free nexus behind it, then he can just continue to pressure me here. Um, a little bit of zergling grass here as well. Those zerglings are absolutely expendable. I have a lot of resources and the zerglings aren't going to do much versus this army. So I have put him all in on this army that forces him to move in and take an engagement. I do surround him very well on creep. Good force fields but uh, my army on creep is just too much for him. Um, he did not want to take that engagement. He wanted to just sit out in front of me, force me to continue to make units, make me uncomfortable and to get his third nexus up. However by forcing a cancel on that third nexus even though I do not have a very good army relative to him. I put him in an uncomfortable position where he had to take a bad engagement, and I was able to take advantage of that and push him back. And now that I do have middle control, I also have my Spire finished, so I'll start up Corruptor production soon, and I just have a massive army advantage. If we look at the supplies, 192 to 132, that's pretty much insurmountable at this point, given that I have very good upgrades, economy, and production as well. So we see my Corruptors are in production up there. Uh, he is sitting back and trying to think uh, third nexus, however, it's far too late. He is going to have to move out and try and be aggressive and actually do something with this army again before the Corruptors make it obsolete. So here we do see the push out, and I have pretty much total map control. My creep spread has been uh, pushed pretty far back by his initial wave, uh, but my army still has center control, and we see spreading it out into the biggest arc possible. Uh, just the basics of ranged unit control, you always want that bigger arc. It gives you um, more service area, more, um, more of your units will be attacking at once. Also his AoE, which is very important in the Colossus, will be doing less damage as you have units less clumped up. Here again we see setting up, spreading out for the attack, making sure that he's going to have to attack into a big arc should he try and be the aggressor. And that is the thing, by taking this big economy, by preventing him from get, getting that third nexus, I do force him to be the aggressor and take that attack. So here he is moving into a better angle, however we see on the minimap a little bit of my army moving around through the center, coming around to flank him, the Corruptor's coming in as well, focusing down the Colossus, and he's catching him in a gigantic surround. Um, no matter how efficient these Colossus are being, he cannot kill everything off when I have this big of a surround. So that was a defensive ZVP. Uh, this has been a Razor Academy replay analysis. Thank you for watching.